Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Secretary, you just quite literally contradicted yourself. You said you are for all of the above, but you're not. We spoke earlier, Representative Issa asked the question about the Keystone Pipeline. You're fundamentally in disagreement with delivering that fuel into the United States of America. It, it, it would beg the question, did the hack on the Colonial Pipeline save you the trouble of having to shut that one down? Well, uh, Congressman, uh, I appreciate your, your question. And may I, as a matter of personal privilege, just say how much I admire your personal service to our country. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. I, I uh, would say to you this. I don't think it's a contradiction. Yes, we're going to use gas for some period of time. And I'm not one of those that comes in and says, you got to shut it down today, tomorrow. We can't do that. What we can do is begin to take steps that reduce reliance, even as we keep alive the ability to have sufficient gas for the purposes we need. It's a fair point, Mr. Secretary, but to the point that you made to my friend Mr. Issa, to quote it, that is true. The pipelines are more carbon delivery efficient than rails and trucks, Correct. saying they, they deliver the fuel by using less carbon in order to deliver that fuel. Let but me Congress finish the quote. Here, let me the finish challenge. the quote and I'll let you respond. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that, that you want to be adding another line, another one of these more efficient routes. There are alternatives, but yes, pipeline is better than trains and trucks. So let me, let me tell you why we, we can do better in meeting our goal of reducing our emissions. All the gas we burn, first of all, Gas is 87 point some percent methane. Gas leaks. If you, in the, in the Permian Basin, for instance, we have a leakage, even if you have it around 2.7 percent, scientists say that can be more damaging than CO2. Our leakage is at about 5 percent or 10 percent in some places in, in America. Now, if that's the leakage in America, think what it is in other places. Because of the melting of permafrost and the melting of the tundra, the thawing of the tundra, we're now seeing methane being released around the world that isn't capped, that isn't used. President Biden has put an effort into his legislation to start capping open wells and open mines that are giving off methane in the United States. Mr. Secretary, could I summarize, so your, could I summarize your position by saying you want no crude or petrol used? <clears throat> Would that be an accurate summary? The what? You want no crude, no petrol used in the future. Would that no. be an accurate summary? Well, it depends what you mean by the future. We're going to be doing that. We're going to be using crude. We're going to be using crude. We're going to, well, crude, first of all, is used for lots of other things than fuel and power. So we're going to use crude well into the future. Not delivered by pipeline, though. Well, no, it could well be delivered by pipeline already. We're doing that. But our source of power, President Biden has already made this decision, and the utilities are already accepting it. I want to ask By one more question, because I, I want to yield some time to one of my friends here who, who may not be able to, to ask you some questions. By 2035, though, President Biden is determined we will be carbon-free in our power production. You're talking about not allowing these new avenues to deliver them, even though they're more efficient, like the Keystone Pipeline. Would there also be an effort to not promote other forms of delivery, that is to say, not permit a new rail car that's being used to deliver that because Colonial is down right now, not permitting a new uh, truck to go over the road, uh, which is what's being used to deliver those, those fuels right now. Would that also be a part of the no, program? No, no, I don't. I, I really think we're talking much more reasonably, Congressman, in a way that we have to try to accelerate the transition to clean fuel. That's what we have to try to accelerate. It's not going to happen overnight. So we're going to need, now, I'd rather see gas used rather than coal anywhere in the world. And I think there are ways to try to assist in doing that. But even gas. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. I'm going to yield my time to Mr. Fluger for a moment. Okay. No, thank you for yielding. Mr. Secretary, for the first time in 70 years, our country is energy independent. It's a lever of power. It's national security. Energy security is national security. And so you've mentioned that we need to take steps. We have taken steps, as you've clearly highlighted today, from being 15 percent down to 11 percent. That's huge. Do you believe that wind and solar can provide baseload capacity for this country? Not alone. No, that's absolutely right. We Not saw it yet. in Texas, Not the winter yet. storms, and we've Not seen it in California. I should, I should amend that by saying, Congressman, 
not yet alone. If we break through on storage. Gentlemen's time has expired. The answer is yes. I now recognize Representative Susan Weil of Pennsylvania for five minutes.